Hello and welcome to my talk today. My name is Lynette and I'm from the School of Sport, Exercise and Nutrition at Massey University. I've been involved in exercise and MECFS research for a number of years and today in my presentation I'll be talking about post exertion malaise and how we can avoid it. So for many years, there's been much discussion about the term post exertion malaise. Despite it being the most debilitating symptom, it is simply not understood well. We know that when individuals exercise, people become happy because they have a release of endorphins. This simply doesn't happen in individuals with MECFS. Those with MECFS tend to feel worse after exertion and they tend to get a number of different symptoms. So the Institute of Medicine came up with uh, this definition, which is the inability to recover normally following physical, cognitive or emotional exertion. So what are the symptoms of PEM? So Lily Chu's group um, started exploring post-exertion malaise and found a number of symptoms reported by individuals. These symptoms ranged from fatigue, muscle pain, poor memory, and joint pain. And so you can see that there's a number of different symptoms experienced by different people. They also went on to document the onset of post-exertion malaise. So here you can see symptoms got brought about within an hour or within 24 hours. They also looked at the duration of post-exertion malaise. And you can see here, it's clear that the duration could last anywhere between one and six hour to anywhere from up to more than a week. So it is clear from this group that symptoms are varied, but not only that, there's a variation in duration of these symptoms. So in order to understand fatigue, it's important to understand scientific models within the literature. From the previous work of our lab and other such labs, such as the Workwell Foundation, we've been using cardiopulmonary exercise testing as a way to understand the physiological system and how the physiology of the body um, is working. So we've been looking at heart rate, cardiac output, and oxygen consumption within individuals with MECFS and also healthy individuals so we can understand what is not normal. So we know that individuals can develop symptoms of post-exertion malaise. We know what these symptoms are. We know that they, they can vary between an hour and a couple of weeks. But what we really want to know is how can we avoid getting into that situation of PEM? So what we have to think about is we have to understand the energy requirement for activities. So on the slide here, you can see I've got different energy requirements for different activities. So we talk about a MET. One MET is the objective measure of energy expended per unit of time. It's a way to describe the intensity of exercise. So an activity that requires three METs, the energy consumption is going to be three times that of when we're just sitting still. The energy consumption of six METs is going to be six times that of when we're sitting still. So the most important thing that individuals with post-exertion malaise can do is that they can document activities so that they can determine how much energy is that particular activity requiring me to do and how do I feel following that activity. It might just be that you're doing simply washing the dishes and you feel bad after washing the dishes, that's okay. For each activity, we can categorize how much energy it takes. The most important thing that we can try and do is we can try and pace our day so we don't use up all our energy at once. Another method is to try and stay within our energy envelope. So this has implications for reducing the frequency and the severity of symptoms of post-exertion malaise. Other methods are to use heart rate monitors to enable us to stay underneath our threshold. 
Now, this is tricky because through our, through our exercise data, we have seen that individuals actually can't achieve a maximum heart rate that is predicted. So in the world of exercise physiology, we generally use 220 minus your age, and then we use uh, a prediction of you should be able to exercise between 50 and 75% of that particular heart rate. However, we know that some individuals with MECFS cannot actually achieve uh, their maximum heart rate. So therefore, the exercise range is not the same as the predicted range. So it's important for individuals with MECFS and post-exertional malaise that they take this into account and don't push into that, into that predicted threshold. The most important thing is to make sure that we stay within our energy envelope. So if we stay inside the energy envelope, we can stabilize symptoms, we can reduce severity, and we can improve our overall quality of life. The most important thing, keep a diary. Keep uh, a diary of what exercise you're doing and how it makes you feel so that you yourself can understand yourself more and so that you can reduce the effects of the push-crush cycle. Thank you for listening.